Now it is my turn to introduce to you the most renowned author, the great speaker, and the former principal advisor to the Director General of the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, Dr. Jibamale Venanche Arache. Welcome, sir. We are eagerly waiting for your kind words. I think it is better that he himself uh, expressed to you by his own words. That's better. Okay. okay. I wish you all um, happy Independence Day from Vienna. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Really audible. Okay. Um, we are celebrating the 75th anniversary of independence, independent India. As an economist, I am trying to reflect on what we have achieved so far and what we failed to achieve, what needs to be achieved. Uh, in 1947, our per capita income in terms of US dollar was less than two. And now it is around 2000. Even after adjusting for inflation, I would say what we have achieved in terms of increasing the per capita income of the people, it is indeed no mean achievement. And another, in the field of uh, health, you know, at the time of independence, uh, you know, people were dying of many diseases and the way we eradicated polio and smallpox, these two are now today standing as um, the best case studies for others to replicate. This is a great achievement in Germany. Then we talk about the green revolution, white revolution, blue revolution. In all these years, we, we did extremely well by injecting the incidence of technical progress to achieve rapid economic transformation of agricultural sector, the dairy sector, and also the sea resources, in exploiting the sea resources. We did extremely well. And our performance uh, definitely stands as a model for others to uh, replicate. Software engineers, the achievements made by them. For more than 20 consecutive years, India is sustaining its global leadership in offering computer-related services. That's mainly software. Of course, in the field of hardware, we miserably fail. Eh? Okay. In space research, India ranks one among the top five countries in the world. And it is worthy of appreciation. We should be really proud of all these achievements. But the truth remains, what we have achieved so far is definitely not proportionate to the potential of the country. It is definitely not proportionate to the potential of the country. Liberalization started only in the early 1980s. For the first time, we were exposed to competitive process for the efficiency gains. We were compelled to enhance efficiency gains, gains. Otherwise, we would not thrive in an internationally competitive environment. We gained a lot. We were establishing links with the dynamic sources of growth, which are generally across the border due to technological marvels. And then we liberated our resources with those dynamic sources of growth. And in the process of liberating, we learned a lot, learned to be innovative, learned to uh, be innovative in the sense, learned to turn out products which befit the country specific context. But still, in terms of uh, global performance, when we compare our, uh, our performance with the global parameters, uh, today, let me give you one simple example. Today, world trade is dominated by 87% of the world trade is dominated by high-tech and sophisticated products. And around the 84% of global manufacturing value added is dominated by high-tech and sophisticated products. If this is the global reality, the question is, you want to be part of it or you want to be out of context. 
But when you look at the performance of the, uh, our, our, our economy in terms of these parameters, it is indeed a giant disappointment. In terms of manufacturing value added, not bad, around 30%, still it is far below the global and the average. But on the export front, we miserably fail. It is hardly 25% against the global average of 86%. That means high tech and sophisticated products accounting for 86% of the global uh, trade in manufacturers. So we are yet to climb the ladder of value addition. We have to realize that. That's why I said our performance hitherto is definitely not proportionate to our potential. We are capable of that. First of all, we should be convinced that we are able to reach the frontiers of best practice. We are able to reduce our distance to the frontiers of uh, best practice. It's possible. Don't think you cannot when you can. Let me relate this sentence to your main mandate of Toastmasters. Training is, intensive training is given to members of Toastmasters to enable them as great speakers. As Professor Damodaran rightly said, you should be able to deliver your speech with a high degree of brevity and crystal clear clarity. And you should be able to explain highly complicated things in simple language. Then you become a good speaker. How to emerge as a good speaker? It will not fall like manna from heaven. It will not certainly come from the training that you receive um, from Toastmaster. I think there is something disturbing on my screen. Is it okay? Uh, I can get out of it. It is fine, sir. Perfect. Going very well, sir. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, you cannot emerge as a great speaker. Just to be the aid of occasional training you get, or maybe weekly training or monthly training you get. You have to put in a lot of effort into that. When I listen to the speeches of Abraham Lincoln, of course, in those days through tape recorder, huh? and when I listen to the speeches of John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, I, I had a very ambitious uh, target. I should emerge as at least 10%. Huh? Um, uh, I should be able to deliver uh, my, my message. At least the way they deliver, 10% of the way these great speakers deliver. I tried. And at that time, I was not technically qualified. I could not write one grammatically defensible sentence in English. I, nor could I speak one <laughs> grammatically defensible in English. What did I do out of me? I used to close the door and stand in the middle of the room and talk to the walls. I try to emerge as a speaker by talking to the walls. When you talk to the walls, they won't leave the hall. When you talk to people uh, in the hall, they may leave, but the walls will not leave. Talk to the walls again and again. Some may, someone may say you are abnormal. Well, let him say whatever you want. Don't allow anybody to intimidate you. You may have your own problems, your own deficiencies, but don't allow anybody to intimate, intimidate you. You talk to the walls, you will gain. Within a week, within a month, you will, you will see you are becoming better off as a speaker. And I am from Kanyagamari. Whenever, every day I used to go to the seashore. You know, Kanyagamari is surrounded by three um, the seas, Bay of Bengal, Indian Ocean, and Arabian Sea. I, when I walk along, I used to mentally edit, mentally edit, mentally edit. Even today I am doing it. When I get an opportunity to speak, I do my homework reflecting on the logical sequence of thoughts, how to start the speech, how to wind up, how to spark a sense of humor, how to make anecdotes. It's all done. It's all programmed and registered. I do a lot of homework. I don't write. I don't bury my head in front of the, uh, into, into notes in, <laughs> in front of the audience because I didn't want, I wanted to be extempo. I wanted to speak without notes. And we practice each game. Fortunately, I got to start my career as a lecturer. That helped. As a lecturer also, I used to do a lot of homework for each lecture. And in front of the students, I used to speak extempo without notes, without it. Even today's students are talking about it. And that was a good training ground because had I just uh, not prepared uh, for my lecture and just started reading the book in front of the, the, the students, I would not have emerged as uh, an effective speaker. I don't say I'm the best speaker, at least an eff effective speaker. And what is the message I'm going to give it to you? 
today we are living in an era of creative destruction new things are making old things stumble every day there is something new and creative destruction is triggered by disruptive technologies disruptive technologies advanced um, the design production system artificial intelligence augmented reality and the uh, additive manufacturing big data management cloud computing and uh, then uh, 3d printers electro mobility internet of things etc 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 and now they talk about quantum computing one week ago i i, I read i was pleasantly surprised a gulf country invested 6 billion dollars to come out with a program and to uh, to solve uh, to use cloud computing as an effective means to eradicate poverty amazing amazing you know uh, it says that anybody can participate in the stock exchange and uh, use that cloud computing and the cloud computing will monitor the exchange in the trend stock market uh, prices uh, automatically you don't do anything you don't have to play with the share prices automatically this will be done by this one and you will only gain and there will be no risk of losing any money this means every day you may earn money even little money if you put 2000 rupees every day it may bring 100 rupees some something you know it is beyond comprehension they are working on it i believe i hope this will see the light of reality so we are living in this era of creative destruction you may say that okay sir i would like to be part of it no you don't try to be part of the change you be the change you don't try to be a part of the future you be the future and don't think you cannot when you can it is definitely within your capability it is with this optimistic note on what you can achieve with a determination hard work dedication loyalty sincerity everything you will be able to do and always remember the present is the future what you do today determines your future don't wait for the future to come the your future will be determined by what you do today so i would say um, the uh, past is uh, history future is mystery and present is your future thank you